हेलो एवरी वन टूडे विल डिस्कस अबाउट द इलियम पार्ट ऑफ द हिप बोन ना फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल दिस इज द हिप बोन और विकेज द इनोमिनेट बोन नाउ सम इम्पॉर्टेंट फीचर ऑफ द हिप बोन फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल नैस यू कैन सी दिस हिप बोन इज मेड अप ऑफ थ्री मेन बोन्स दैट इज द इलियम दिस पर्पल इज द ईशिया एंड दिस इज द प्यूबिस नाउ एज यू कैन सी द थ्री पार्ट आर जॉइंट टूगेदर टू ईच अदर एट अ कप शेप स्ट्रक्चर इज द कप शेप स्ट्रक्चर and this cup shaped structure or the hollow part is known as the acetabulum okay now the pubis this one the pubis and the ischium are separated by a large oval opening known as the obturator foramen now this acetabulum actually articulates with the head of the femur and forms the hip joint so basically over here the head of the femur will join over here and will form the main hip joint Now, as you can see in this diagram, the pubis part. This is the pubis part. So, the pubis or the pubic part of the two hip bones meet anteriorly, okay, in the median plane, okay, and forms the pubic symphysis. This is the pubic symphysis, and also the two hip bones form the pelvic or the hip girdle. And remember, the bony pelvis is formed by the two hip bones joined to the sacrum and the coccyx. Now, very important thing in the exam is the side determination. You have to know that which bone is this right hip bone or the left hip bone, right? So, just remember two things for the hip bone. That just remember that wherever the acetabulum is present, okay, the acetabulum should always present on the lateral side. So, this acetabulum of course forms the hip joint with the particular head of the femur bone, right? So, it would always present on the lateral side. And second thing is about the anterior superior iliac spine this is the anterior superior iliac spine over here i'll tell you what is this in the later but just remember this anterior superior iliac spine should always come in the front okay so you will be able to get that while holding from over here so just remember that acetabulum should be on the lateral side and the anterior superior iliac spine should be in the front okay so of course if i'll hold this in my hand so it will be the right hip bone Now let's come on the ilium part first of all. Now as you can see, this brown color structure in this bone is the ilium part of the hip bone. Now the features of the ilium. Now first of all, it is upper end. Now as you can see, the upper end it has iliac crest. Okay, this is the iliac crest. Now at the lower end, as you can see, uh, there is a smaller and a fused part of the ilium which actually fuses with the pubis bone and the ischium at the acetabulum. Okay, and the ilium forms the upper two fifths of the acetabulum. Told you before only. Now the three borders. It has basically three borders. Means two ends, upper and the lower end, and three borders. That is the anterior border, posterior border, and the medial border over here. And it has basically three surfaces also. That is the gluteal surface. Gluteal surface basically the outer surface. Okay, the outer, the lateral surface of uh, this uh, hip bone. Okay. Next is the iliac surface. This is the iliac surface. Okay. And over here, this this portion over here is known as the sacro pelvic surface. Now this part is basically divided into three parts. That is the auricular surface, iliac tuberosity, and third one is the pelvic surface. Now first of all the iliac crest. Now this is the iliac crest as you can see. Okay. Now this iliac crest is a broad convex ridge forming the upper end of the ilium. Okay. And over here as you can see this is the tubercle of the iliac crest at the lateral view of the ilium. There is a il uh, tubercle of iliac crest. And over here as you can see this is the highest. Point of the iliac crest. The highest point of the iliac crest is basically situated at a point little behind the midpoint of this particular iliac crest. Okay, a little behind the midpoint, there is a highest point of the iliac crest, and the level of this particular highest point is the is in between the L3 and L4 vertebras. Okay, now ends. Now as you can see over here, the anterior part there is the anterior superior iliac spine. At the anterior end of this iliac crest, we have anterior superior iliac spine. And this is a prominent landmark that is easily felt in the living also. You can easily uh, feel this particular anterior superior iliac spine. Now the posterior part, of course, will be having the posterior superior iliac spine. This is a posterior superior iliac spine. Now this PSI is basically present lateral of the second sacral spine. Now the anterior border. This is the anterior border. It will be seen uh, best from over here. Now as you can see, this is the anterior superior iliac spine, posterior superior iliac spine. This is the iliac crest. Now over here, because this is the anterior border, anterior border of the hip bone. Now this anterior border starts at the anterior superior iliac spine and runs downwards, runs downwards to the. This is the acetabulum. So from this ASIS to the acetabulum, this is the acetabulum. So this is the particular anterior border, as you can see. Now as you can see at the lower part, 
at this over here there is an elevated structure and this structure elevated structure is known as the anterior inferior iliac spine so anterior superior iliac spine this is the anterior inferior iliac spine okay now the lower half of this spine is larger as you can see it's larger and triangular in structure now next is the posterior border now the posterior border is better view from the uh, posterior view of the hip joint this is the posterior view of the hip joint now over here the uh, posterior border continues from the uh, start from the psis means posterior superior iliac spine continues downwards up till up till the upper end of the posterior border of the ischium somewhere over here the ischium will start us look at this diagram over here as you can see this is the ischium right so this particular posterior border will continue from the posterior superior iliac spine up to the this up to the upper end of the posterior border of the ischium right now if we trace down from the posterior superior iliac spine few centimeter below this particular psis you will able to see another prominence okay and this prominence is known as a posterior inferior iliac spine and when you will go still lower or downward direction you will be able to see one large deep notch and this notch is known as the greater sciatic notch okay now next is the medial border okay so till now we did the anterior border the posterior border this is the uh, anterior superior iliac spine posterior superior iliac spine anterior inferior iliac spine posterior inferior iliac spine then this is the greater sciatic notch now this is the uh, main uh, medial view medial side view of the right hip bone okay and this is the uh, lateral view so on the medial view as you can see over here we have one medial border okay this is the medial border of this right hip bone now this medial border actually extends on the inner or the pelvic surface remember it present in the medial surface of this particular hip bone and it actually extends from the iliac crest to the iliopubic eminence okay this over here as you can see this is the iliopubic eminence now this particular medial border separates the iliac fossa from the sacropelvic sacropelvic surface of the hip bone now next other surfaces we have basically three surfaces of the hip bone that is the uh, gluteal surface iliac fossa surface and the sacropelvic surface then first of all the gluteal surface this is the gluteal surface okay this is the lateral view or we can see the outside view of this particular hip bone or the innominate bone and this is known as the gluteal surface now this gluteal surface is the outer surface of the ilium which is convex in the front and concave behind like the iliac crest only it is divided into four main areas as you can see it has basically three lines and these three lines actually divides this particular gluteal surface into four main regions now first of all the posterior gluteal line this is the posterior gluteal line at the posterior near the posterior border of the innominate bone this is the posterior gluteal line now this line is basically the shortest one and begins 5 cm in front of the posterior superior iliac spine okay and this actually run downwards to end at the upper part of the greater sciatic notch this is the greater sciatic notch so it basically runs uh, 5 cm in front of this posterior superior iliac spine and goes down and ends at upper part of this greater sciatic notch now next is the anterior gluteal line this is the anterior gluteal line this is the longest one it basically begins about 4 cm behind this anterior superior iliac spine and runs backwards and downwards and it actually ends at the upper part and the middle middle uh, portion of this greater sciatic notch or somewhere over here it will end this is a greater sciatic notch so the upper part and the middle about the middle point of this greater sciatic notch it will end now next is the inferior gluteal line this is the inferior gluteal line it basically uh, mostly it is ill defined only and uh, it begins a little above and behind this anterior inferior iliac spine as you can see little behind and above and runs backwards and downwards to end near the apex of this greater sciatic notch now this iliac fossa is the large concave area on the inner surface of the, we can say the medial surface of this particular hip bone and the ilium and is situated in front of this medial border remember this is the left hip bone and this is the right hip bone right so the left hip bone as you can see this is the anterior part and this is the posterior part so this medial border is basic in the medial this is the medial border so in the front of this medial border it will be iliac fossa so remember this is the left hip bone so don't get confused that this is the which bone is this, this is the right hip bone and this is the left hip bone right hip bone anterior uh, lateral view and the left hip bone medial or because the inner view so in front of this medial border there will be iliac fossa now next is the sacropelvic surface this is the sacropelvic surface present behind this particular medial border 
Now this surface is subdivided into many three surfaces. That is the auricular surface, iliac tuberosity, and the pelvic surface. Now this is the iliac tuberosity, and just below, or we can say the entero inferior part of this iliac tuberosity forms the auricular surface. Now this auricular surface is basically pitted and uh, articulate nature because this auricular surface is actually articulates with the sacrum to form the sacroiliac joint as you can see in this diagram uh, over here the sacrum this is the sacrum and this sacrum actually joins with the part or articulates with the articular surface of the uh, ilium or we can say the articular surface of the auricular surface of the ilium to form the sacroiliac joint okay so this particular pitted surface or auricular surface articulates with the sacrum and forming the sacroiliac joint now last is the pelvic surface this is the pelvic surface this surface is smooth and lies entero inferior to the auricular surface it forms a part of the lateral wall of the true pelvis now along the upper border of this greater sciatic notch this surface this pelvic surface actually is marked by the pre auricular sulcus okay now this sulcus is deeper in females as compared to the males now very important attachments of this particular hip bone now first of all at the anterior superior iliac spine now this anterior superior iliac spine actually give attachment to the inguinal ligament and also to the sartorius muscle now this sartorius muscle actually goes downwards uh, means its origin actually starts from over here and its origin actually up to this particular notch means we can say at the upper half of this particular notch the origin of the sartorius muscle is present now next is the attachments at the iliac crest now this this is the iliac crest okay so if i view or zoom in from the above side if i look this particular from the above side i will be able to see this type of structure right this is the iliac crest now this iliac crest is basically divided into many uh, many segments or we can say many uh, parts to study the muscle structure so first of all at the outer lip this is the outer lip okay this is the inner lip okay and in the between of this there will be intermediate area of the iliac crest so first of all at the outer lip or we can say this outer lip will present towards the lateral surface of the hip bone right so first of all laterally means at the outermost part there will be tensor fascia lata it will present the whole extent of this particular iliac crest now in order to this there is insertion of the external oblique muscle external oblique muscle in its anterior two third part okay. and just behind the highest part of the iliac crest we are having the origin of the latissimus dorsi muscle now the intermediate part this is the intermediate part of this particular iliac crest now intermediate area of the iliac crest gives origin to the internal oblique muscle internal oblique muscle in the anterior two third part now next is the inner lip now the inner lip the iliac crest provides the origin to the transversus abdominis muscle in the most inner part a most medial part we can say transversus abdominis muscle in the anterior two third portion now deep to this transversus abdominis muscle there will be uh, attachment of the fascia transversalis and the fascia iliaca in its anterior two so just deep to this transversus abdominis will be having two further structures that is the uh, fascia iliaca and the fascia transversalis attachment now the origin of the cordus lumborum is present over here as you can see at the posterior one third of the particular ventral segment this is the ventral segment in the dorsal segment so the ventral segment posterior part there will be the attachment of two main structure means outer lip there will be that is much dorsi and inner lip there will be attachment of the cordus lumborum in the posterior part of the ventral segment of this particular iliac crest now attachment at the dorsal segment of the iliac crest okay as you can see over here at the outermost part with the lateral part or the lateral slope it give origin to the gluteus maximus because over here this at the dorsal segment at the ventral segment everything was uh, on means almost things were like outer lip inner lip and the intermediate part but in the posterior or the dorsal segment in the dorsal segment it uh, this particular iliac crest basically present as a slope as you can see in this diagram at the posterior part at the posterior part as you can see there is a slope like structure so near this uh, this outer outer slope there is attachment or the origin of the gluteus maximus okay now the medial slope or because the inner slope actually gives origin to the erector spiny muscle now at the medial margin and deep this erector erector spiny muscle we are having the attachment of the interosseous and the dorsal sacroiliac ligaments means deep to this particular erector spiny muscle now attachment at the upper part and the lower part of this particular anterior inferior iliac spine now I told you before only that this uh, sartorius muscle is actually attach or origin from the asis and also from the upper half of this particular notch 
so this lower half of this particular notch up till this entry in free iliac spine gives origin to the straight head of the rectus femoris muscle so remember at the upper part of this entry in free iliac spine there is origin of the uh, straight head of the rectus femoris muscle while the lower roughen part over here or somewhere there is attachment to the ilio femoral ligament now next is the attachment at the posterior border of this uh, ilium now above this greater sciatic notch there is attachment of this uh, sacrotubus ligament Let's look at this diagram this is a sacrotubus ligament okay basically this attachment of this particular ligament is basically present above the greater sciatic notch okay and at the upper margin remember upper margin of this greater sciatic notch gives origin to the piriformis muscle now next are the attachment of the gluteal surface now over here it is very simple just remember that these three if you remember these three are the gluteal lines okay posterior gluteal line anterior gluteal line and the inferior gluteal line so attachment of the gluteus muscle will be present at this particular gluteal surface so just remember be, uh, behind this posterior gluteal line there will be attachment of this particular gluteus maximus muscle over here behind the posterior gluteal line now between the posterior gluteal line and the anterior gluteal line there will be attachment of the gluteus medius muscle and between the anterior gluteal line and the inferior gluteal line there will be attachment of the gluteus minimus muscle so gluteus maximus gluteus medius and gluteus minimus muscle now area now area just below this particular inferior gluteal line there will be attachment of the origin of the reflected head of rectus femoris muscle so over here reflected head of rectus femoris muscle and just if you remember i told you that the at the inferior one third or because the lower one third part or means above this anterior inferior leg spine there will be at the upper part of this there will be attachment of the uh, straight head of rectus femoris muscle so over here above this uh, entry in free leg spine there will be attachment of this uh, straight head of the rectus femoris muscle and over here there will be attachment of the reflected head of rectus femoris muscle the capsule ligament of the hip joint is present or is attached along the margins of the acetabulum because over here the hip joint is present between the uh, acetabulum and the particular head of the femur now next is the attachment at the sacro pelvic surface of the ilium now if, if, I, if you remember I told you before that this is the auricular surface this is the iliac tuberosity over here and this is the pelvic surface below this particular auricular surface so, now the sacro iliac tuberosity give attachment to the interosseous sacro iliac ligament dorsal sacro iliac ligament and the ilio lumbar ligaments only ligaments are basically present at the uh, this iliac tuberosity part now this is the auricular surface we actually form the sacro iliac joint by attaching to the sacral bone okay and it, of course it will be having the ventral sacro iliac ligament now the pelvic surface give attachment to the piriformis and the obturator internus muscle so this was all about the ilium we will discuss about the pubis and the ischium in the further next videos i hope you understood it well thank you so much